Hey there, I think it's time for another uh, Python Code Review Unplugged episode here. And um, I got this script or Python script code snippet here from um, from Roger, who sent it over to me via Twitter and asked me to give him some feedback on that. And um, this is short and sweet, so I'll be able to go over this relatively quickly, I think. But there are a couple of things in there um, that I think could be improved a little or just cleaned up a little bit. And so hopefully seeing how to do that uh, will be useful to you. All right, so let's dig right in. Um, so I haven't really looked at this before, but um, basically all I did is I loaded this into my editor. So I'm using uh, Sublime Text for this uh, with kind of the setup that I explained on my website. And um, I'm using a, a built-in linter here. So this is giving me feedback on um, well, it's basically running Flake 8 on the Python source code and then giving me inline feedback on what's going on here. So in this case, like one of the first things I usually do in the code review like this, or sort of like a cleanup pass um, like this, is I would just make sure it, you know, the code is PEP8 compliant and it's kind of formatted nicely. So probably the first thing I would do here is actually get rid of this commented outline. And then I would get my import straight. So I like to split these up. So this Uno thing looks like it's a third party thing that um, is used for interacting with uh, LibreOffice. So this is a, like a LibreOffice um, script to do some automation with LibreOffice. And so I imagine this is something LibreOffice specific. And what I like to do is I kind of split up my, my sort of Python built-in or standard library libraries, put them on top. And then below that, I put the third-party libraries. Now, this one here, I would probably turn that into a doc string, you know, just for great consistency. And all of this stuff is, I know, is very nitpicky to a degree, but I feel like it really helps um, structuring the code in a way that makes it easier to, um, well, just to understand and easier to work with. So I, I like to do that. Okay. Yeah, so we've got this Uno thing. Um, honestly, I, I don't feel like this comment is giving me giving me a lot here. Like we're importing this here. Like to me, it seems pretty clear that we would need it later. So I'd probably actually get rid of this. Um, I would get rid of the like personally. I don't I don't usually try not to do stuff like that. Um, I I did that in the past. Um, Kind of, you know, trying to sort of embellish my source files with these separators and stuff, but I, I stopped doing that. Um, I stopped doing that, like, I don't know, several years ago and never came back to it because I feel like it's often doesn't add a lot of value. I mean, I might occasionally do it, but in this case, I feel like it's not really adding, um, adding a ton of clarity. Um, yeah, so another thing that I'm seeing here, like just, you know, kind of glancing at this is that um, this is uh, longer than the 80 lines, uh, the 80 characters per line standard here. So that's why I'm getting a bunch of wrapping. And also, you know, for the sake of you watching this video, I'm also going to change that to be fully PEP8 compliant. So it makes it a little bit easier to read in the video. So yeah, so I probably would do here. So again, turn this into like a nice and clean doc string. You know, just wrap this nicely. And um, okay, so maybe this needs to be called create doc because it's um, that's something that uh, that is called um, or that's how LibreOffice calls it. But I the, personally, I would like I would call this create underscore doc. Yeah. And then okay, so here we're grabbing the context and then looks are we doing anything with the context nope so i would probably do something like this oh wait okay we do need the context never mind but we don't really need the service manager right so i might actually do something like this like i know it's um Sometimes uh, it's um, it's not a good idea to have these like long nested lines here, but I feel like this actually 
looks better now and there's not really benefit to capturing that in a variable and then i'm just i'm going to take advantage of the the um, open parentheses continuation here this looks like this would not need the space here yeah and then i'm just gonna sort out here the the spacing here and then i usually like to indent stuff like that all right and then here in this next line open a writer document um probably also do the same formatting trick um personally i'm not a huge fan of using this syntax to create a tuple so i would maybe just use um something like this to make sure you know like to make the the intent here perfectly clear that we're just creating an empty tuple for to me that's clearer but obviously the other one would also work um yeah so i'm so i'm having some thoughts around this uh these constants here maybe if they should be made actual constants in the code um sort of on the fence with that um it's probably probably fine to leave it like that so we've got some debug stuff in here so i'm just going to get rid of that as well um okay so we're grabbing the document text are we ever using this for anything oh yeah okay so we're keeping track of that grabbing the cursor i guess we need to take the cursor um the tab so i'm thinking actually does the tabs thing this would this would make a pretty good constant. So I would take that out, actually place it here. And then I would do this. Yeah, and make that a constant. And then here, okay, getting, getting ahead of myself here. Um, okay, so now we're creating the stuff grabbing the, the desktop and doing the uh creating the document here um so okay so it looks like we're doing some date parsing here this works only if the year is four digits and the day and month are two digits um oh yeah okay because we're splitting we're splitting that string here and then we're reassembling that okay so so a couple of ideas here probably the first thing that i would do is that I would extract this into a function, right? Because every time I you have something like this where you're doing a bunch of operations and calculating a bunch of intermediate values only to combine them into one um, sort of result, then that's a pretty good candidate for a function, right? Because in this case, we're only using the today date and I'm seeing that down here. So what I would probably do is I would, as a first step, take this out and then create this sort of helper function. Um, let's just call it format date. And this would take a, um, this would take a date. And then we could change this to be a function and we could say, uh, wait, so this is what we're passing in here, right? So I would extract that out and I would say, um, this is how we're formatting it. And then I would say today date equals format date of the current Daytime, daytime now, daytime, daytime. Okay, so I think you can actually do um, de, um, uh, daytime date today. So I'm gonna do, let me check this, um, daytime date today. Yeah, so this is gonna be the same as doing daytime, daytime now date, right? Because daytime now, gives the full date time with the time and we just want this so we can uh, we can shorten this and the reason whoops uh, the reason I'm passing this in as a um, as a date is to have a little bit more flexibility and then later we could potentially also write uh, tests for this and I'm gonna rename this um, just to make that 
nice and pythony or pythonic here with the underscore okay let's just clean up some of the spacing here or maybe that was done to align um yeah i guess that's aligning these these guys here yeah you know what um, i'm gonna get rid of that but it might actually not be a bad idea to have this this alignment here um it might not really hurt okay so let's see so we've got this um actually i think this is time it's time for another function here but we can take a look at that all right so here we're doing a bunch of date time um or like date formatting now okay so a couple of things here um we could i guess we could keep that um which gets um um like this i mean this would technically work but what i think could be improved about this is um there's python has a built-in way to format dates uh, this is something that i need to google so just fire up a browser here all right so the date class has a stir f time that you can use or stir f time function that you can use to to um create a formatted string based on the the value of that date so i would probably refactor this um to something like this and we might actually decide to to bring this back into the the uh, the other function here um so i probably do something like this where i'm doing date stir f time and it looks like we want day month year um, i'm gonna go back here into the interpreter just to play with this a little bit so there's a couple of options here um, okay let me let, let me do it this way so i'm gonna say i'm gonna grab uh, today's date right so this is today and then what i can do with this i could either use um, iso format which uh ah, sorry that's the wrong one um today dot ISO format. So I could either use uh, ISO format here, which would format my date like this, which it looks like that's not what you want, right? You want day month year. So for that, we need to do um, stir f time. And then we need to find out what the right uh, formatting string is we need to construct here. So we want day, which would be percent %d. Then we want percent %m, and you can decide whether or not these should be zero padded. So I think you want zero padded here, right? Because of the way you're splitting this. Yeah. Okay, so we probably want uh, d slash m, and then let's see if, if it's that. We may want this. Yeah, okay. It's like a mini formatting language uh, that you can use to build the perfect formatting string for your um, your dates here and I think this is exactly what we wanted so we can say date stir f time and now this replaces all of this code and this like a little bit um, um, fiddly you know character manipulation here so based on the fact that we're only using this in one place, I'm actually tempted to get rid of this function again and um, to do uh, to do the, this. Yeah, oh, no, wait, so let's, <laughs> okay. So I wanted to see if I could get the, the date here. Um, yeah, but we'll, we'll just all do it all in one, one line. Right. So, okay. So this is, this would be the same thing. And now, now we can talk about this, um, this guy here. So I'm, I'm seeing some duplication here. For example, I mean, everything all the way up here is usually the same. And then I don't know what the zero does. And we want to sort of terminate those lines with a slash N. So it might actually sense, it might make sense to introduce, um, uh, a helper function for that. So I would probably do something like this. Um, insert text. Takes the text. So is this called text? Okay, is this 
the doc text. Let's make sure this is clear. Doc text. Um, and then we want the actual the actual text. Maybe not named very well. And we want um, the indentation. And then I would say, oh, okay, so we need doc text cursor. All right, and then now I would say, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, so I, we need to prepend the tabs and this stuff. So I would say, um, do an if statement, and then we just modify text um, to be tabs plus plus text plus slash n. And otherwise, I would say uh, we're just going to do this. And then just use this text here. And I um, just want to remember what this needs to look like. Yeah, All right. And then here, this would be the same for everything. Um, it's going to automatically indent. So I could just go along, replace all of these. Oh, and we also don't need the the uh, the new line at the end. Um, and then here just want um, the empty string and not have the indentation because we want a completely empty line, right? So I'll get rid of that. But yeah, so this is probably what I, oh, okay, so actually, yeah. All right, and then, okay, so now doc text isn't defined, so we would need to, um, let's actually, let's rename this. Yeah, so this is this is probably what I would do as a first um, first pass on this. Okay, so I see you use different quotes here, so I want to want to match that quote style. Um, yeah, this is probably what I would do here as a first pass, just a quick cleanup. Okay, one more thing. All right, as a quick cleanup. Um, I hope the script still works because I made a couple of changes and I don't have LibreOffice uh, installed here, so I've can't really be 100% sure. I didn't introduce some kind of uh, bug or mistake here, but um, for for first pass, I think this is um, a little bit more cleaned up and probably like changing this here with the um, using to use stir f time instead of doing the date manipulation um, manually. That probably had the biggest impact on readability. So maybe that's something um, you can like that's a trick you can pick up in the future but other than that um yeah this is probably what i would do like we could argue about like you know factoring out some more of that stuff and like you could actually turn this into a list and then just have it like go over the lines and apply them but uh i think this is okay you don't want to overdo these things because then it just gets a little bit ridiculous if this is just like a simple automation script but but yeah overall i think this is how i would change this and um, i think that improve the readability and uh, the formatting a bit. All right, so I hope this was helpful. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. Happy Pythoning.